morning. I woke up this morning to a very sore back once again. I think I tweaked it again uh, while working in my frozen truck yesterday. Seems my back doesn't like this new freezer. We swapped freezers with another department in our store. week or two ago when uh, when they shut them down to uh, do the upgrades that they needed to do to them well I tweaked my back on the day that I moved everything back in and I think yesterday I did it again although it's not as severe as it was the first time my lower back has been in a lot of pain since uh, uh, since yesterday evening. So I made a makeshift lumbar pillow to put in my office chair last night. That seemed to help a little bit, but my back this morning woke up. It's very sore. So I've got my seat propped all the way forward with the back of my seat all the way forward to keep me very upright which is helping to stretch out the back um, but there's that nagging pain at the bottom of my back pretty much non-stop right now so anyway uh, last night or yesterday afternoon uh, they made some announcements at work I forgot to mention in yesterday's vlog uh, the most notably of which is our company is going to begin temperature checks on all employees. And they explain that um, the process is going to be the same when you come in to punch in. You come in, they want us to punch in so that we're on the clock. And then we are to go to the store manager's office where somebody will supposedly will be there at all times to check temperatures. And what they'll do is they'll use, um, it's not a, uh, it's a non-penetrating temperature, so it's basically one of those laser guns that they're gonna point at our forehead. And if we are temping at, I think they said 100.3 or above, uh, we will be immediately sent home and we will be asked to immediately seek medical advice from there and we won't be allowed to go back to work until we have a doctor's note saying that it's okay to go back to work my opinion there is they probably would have done it before but sourcing the temperatures guns for hundreds of stores was probably a problem until now. Now that they finally managed to source that many temperature guns, at least one for every store, they're, uh, they're going forward with the temperature checks. They also made a number of another announcements concerning uh, our remodel, some changes to schedules, None of which really apply to this situation or this vlog. It's all a bunch of dates of certain amenities are opening hot bars and pizza shop and the new Starbucks and all that stuff. Basically a bunch of construction dates, so they did do that. And number three, they um, announced that our hours are going back to 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Going back to regular hours. Well, not regularly regular hours. Our regular hours are uh, 6 a.m. to midnight. But now they're uh, going to a 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So that there'll be customers in the store in the evening now. So yeah, I don't know um, what today holds. It's a beautiful day today. People are going to be out and about. 
more and more people are ending their their at home stay so things are definitely getting more back to normal so I'm gonna go ahead and end the morning portion of this I'm gonna go ahead and end the morning portion of this and pick it up on the other side should be somewhere around sunset um, I guess I don't have anything else to say, so we'll see you in about 10 hours. Are you ready to go for a walk? Are you ready to go for a walk? Huh? <laughs> All right, let's go Stop for a walk. Stop gnawing on your leash. There she goes. That All right. walk. Here we are, walking. Here we is. It's been, what, a couple days now since we've done one? It's definitely been way sooner than the period between <laughs> when we <laughs> did the last one. Oh, come on. She's being stubborn. Come on, Ella. Come on. Come on, baby. Yeah. <sighs> So, something changed at my store that oh, I haven't really? told you yet. Really? Temperature checks. Oh, yay. Starting Wednesday. Starting Wednesday, so you haven't started doing them yet. Yep, the cutoff is 100.3. Ah. And I think that's our cutoff too. And they told us, they told us what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna punch in. Oh, you punch in before you do your temperature yep. check? We punch in before we do our temperature check and um, they check us and if we're good we continue on with our day yeah. if we're not they send us home we get paid for that day oh that's nice of them yeah and we are told to seek medical attention and we're not allowed back to work until we have a doctor's note saying that we're You're okay good. to come back to work We've been doing temperature checks for a couple of weeks now. We have to do it before we log in. So. But they give us like an extra 10 minutes on our paycheck for every shift that we work. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know why they just wouldn't have us log in. Is it because there's it. a line? Sometimes. We're also having our delivery drivers go to the same line. So. <laughs> Fair enough. We have to do it before we come in there. I think 100.3 is the same. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same sort of deal. If we get beyond 100.3, they send us home, probably without pay. And because we haven't been punching in. Yeah. So, well, we'll see how it goes. And then it's, I think, 72 hours without a fever. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. For us. We haven't had them. Ours don't start till Wednesday. I think they wanted to do them before. Before that point. But. You couldn't get a gun. Well, they had to secure enough guns for every store. So. They use the laser style guns. Ooh, that is very wet. So, I don't know. We'll see. That's the big change at our store. Oh, I think next week I heard that our store was going to start giving masks to customers. Every customer that comes to the floor can get a, a mask. Um, if they want if they want it's not required they're not requiring them yet but <laughs> they'll, they'll be offering masks to customers for free I see if they don't have it hoping that everyone they'll, takes they'll one they'll take it voluntarily and yeah just suck it up 
unless they're one of those jerks that's like, no, I ain't gonna wear a mask. It's my goddamn right as an American. <laughs> Hashtag America. <laughs> to get sick oh, my whole time. She's all over it. Tonight. Yep. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting. What if we do one of these things and there's a checkpoint set up down there? I don't think it's gonna get that far. I think the worst of the shutdown is over. Like, I feel like because we're in such a red state that... No, I'm talking about drunk driver checkpoint. Oh. Oh yeah, they do, they do set up dr drunk driving checkpoints on like holidays and stuff at this road. Yeah. <laughs> Holidays, weekends, it's always yeah. a Friday or Saturday night when they do them. And right now it is a Saturday night. Yeah. This is They'd the... be set up by now if they were doing it though. Yeah. It's 11.25 right now. But They would have already started doing them. Yeah, this is the only way in and out of town. Well, not the really? only way. It's... But from I-40, it's... Yeah. it's the only way. So, so you, got, you get most of people headed in and out of town. Yeah. Going through this road. She loves these walks. She loves them. Smoky. Oh, well, that tonight, so one of our neighbors was doing, uh, somebody on, on, uh, Bonaparte Drive was doing an outdoor, uh, music. Oh. From 4 good. to 8 p.m. They were basically going to be set up on their front yard. They're going to be set up on their front yard and anybody who wanted to come watch could bring lawn chairs and set up six feet apart, of course. <laughs> yeah. Come on, BB. We'll wait for cars. Okay, we're good. Think we're good. Run, run, run. Got a lot more cars out and about recently. There's been a lot more cars out and about. I'm getting, I'm getting a general mood from all the general public that it's May one, it's over. Yeah. It's back to normal. Yeah. Because traffic the last day or two has been bad. Um, it's almost back to. It's almost pre back to pre-COVID nineteen yeah. levels. Unfortunately, we live in the south and cases are still going up here. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I fear for all the healthcare workers that are, we're about to go into a big spike Yeah. and they're gonna get overwhelmed. I mean, our state is still technically shut down until I think 15th, 17th? Something like that. Yeah, M mid May. Yeah. But our state is also one of the states that's having large amount of uh, protests. Yeah. Trying to get uh, the state reopened. Here's the problem with the, I see with the protests though. I think it's just um, uh, almost anti-government anarchists, oh, I don't yeah. know what you want to call them, oh, yeah. are taking advantage of the situation yeah, to get a little free press. They're, they're, coming, they're coming into the state capitol wearing camo and carrying assault rifles, protesting. Yep. Yep. It has very little to do with like sh the shutdown itself. It's more like yeah, it's it's an I opportunity. I hate the government and I don't want them right. telling me what I can and can't do. Right. <laughs> so it's more of that than like the this the shutdown has gone way too far. Yeah. When it really has it. No, I. They're they're using they're using a protest against the shutdown as a cover for their other oh, yeah. their bigger agenda of oh, yeah. just overall anti-government. What you see, baby? What you see? You see deer? Oh, I don't know what she sees. The rock. Oh, is the rock scary? Yeah. <laughs> Don't scare her like that. She's jumpy. That's so mean. 
So anyway, no, I, I don't agree with any of the protests. And I, and I think a lot of the news outlets have, have done random um, surveys of North, North Carolina residents. And I think it's like 75% or 70% um, agree with the sh shutdown in place. Oh, yeah. And don't agree with the people protesting. Oh, so it's yeah. a very small minority. But they're getting a whole lot of press. We have something like, I think yesterday we topped 11,000 cases in yep. the area. Yep. Yeah, 11,000 cases in the state. Yeah, in the Most state. of them are in the... In this area. In, in the... Oh, well, in the metropolitan areas yeah so raleigh durham charlotte greensboro yeah, we're just outside of the epicenter but not yeah. very much but we're in among the most populated parts of the state so yeah so we're right in the mix of all that yeah but so far knock on wood <laughs> There hasn't been any cases in my store yeah. in terms of associates. Well, well I can't say the same. <laughs> no, you can't. No, but there hasn't that. been any since the two that you've had, right? I think it was technically three. Someone stomped on that anthill. Good for them. Good job. <laughs> I, think, I think we've had three cases overall in my store. Oh, okay. But we haven't had any since I didn't hear March. about... I didn't hear about the third one. I don't think we've had any since late March. Oh, okay. So, and for the most part, it's fairly contained. Either that or people are asymptomatic and just dealing with it. But we're also doing temperature checks and whatnot. Yeah. So. Well, that helps a little bit. A little. We've talked about my a feelings little. on how effective the temperature checks are. Yeah. Where you can be spreading the disease. Sorry. Well before you're showing any kind of temperature. Oh yeah. But that's a discussion for another day. <laughs> I think it's a discussion we've had a few times. I'm a little underdressed for this. I'm chilly. A little bit. But I'm also wearing a sweater. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm in not t-shirt, so t-shirt and shorts, <laughs> socks and slides. So, yeah, other than that, it really hasn't been a whole lot. Yeah. I think we'll just go to the park today and turn around. Mm -hmm. Not all the way around that circle. All right. We'll just trick Nala by going across the street and then back. <laughs> well, Mother's Day is coming up. It is. That's more of a me thing than a you thing because I work in a floral department. So I'm having to deal with It's a me thing a too because we got bakery. Yeah. And there's a lot of cakes. Okay. Cupcakes, cakes. Are you expecting much business from Mother's Day? We usually get it. And we've already taken, I took four orders today for cakes for next Saturday. People are still doing graduation parties. Really? Yep. Yep, graduation parties. Well, we're not, I think we're not expecting graduation. There's stuff. no graduation ceremony. Yeah, there isn't. That all this but people are still around the area have canceled the ceremony. But people are still going forward with their parties. Uh, we haven't ordered flowers for any sort of graduation. <laughs> We're just focusing on Mother's Day. Yeah. But we're still getting a giant truck full of roses that someone will yeah. have to prep. Well, seems like Mother's Day weekend is also the same weekend that all the state colleges in this state have their graduations every year. Yeah. So. It, it's on purpose. <laughs> yeah. They shouldn't do it in the same weekend. No. They're not thinking of us essential workers when it comes to that. <laughs> it's always been Mother's Day weekend though. Yeah. Like even App State spring graduation is Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. But now you got a bunch of new graduates coming out this spring. <laughs> no that jobs. Can't get any jobs, at least not in your field. No. Because no one's broadcasting any sports. <laughs> no one's broadcasting any sports, and control rooms are getting smaller and smaller. 
Yeah. For, for many different reasons. They, they were already getting smaller to begin with. Yeah. Because of automation. More automation. Yeah. But now they're getting smaller just because they can't. They, they just can't have that many people in control rooms. Yeah. Yeah, especially a lot of control rooms, particularly with big sports events, are inside tractor trailer trucks. <laughs> <laughs> the one I've worked in, actually both of them, the one I worked in while I was in school and the one um, that my current job uses, they're, they're both sort of standalone. Yeah. Like fully AC and all of that. So well, it's a be. little bit better. But it's still very cramped. Yeah, they have to be because the the uh, the equipment needs to be yeah, cooled. Just, yeah. So the AC is there more for to keep the equipment cool yeah. than keep you cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the equipment it helps. the equipment performs a lot better when it's cool. Yeah. If it's overheating, you start getting buggy equipment. Also, you just don't want to expose any of that equipment. To the That's elements. why you go into any large business that has an IT closet or in some cases an IT room yeah where all the servers are that room will be kept at an extremely low temperature yeah. because all the equipment runs better when it's cool and most of the hot air produced by all that equipment is basically rounded up and exhausted out the building yeah. so yeah it's done that way on purpose Actually, we'll turn around at that next driveway up here. She's scared of something. What do you see? She's seeing things. Seeing shadows. Yeah. She's trucking on, though. Yep. <sighs> so, yeah. Not much going on. No. In the world. It's just the new normal. <laughs> New it's becoming that way, isn't it? Keep it on. Looks like the face mask thing is going to be a thing pretty much the rest of this year. Oh, yeah. From what I can Who see. Who knew? 2020. 2020, it would the be year. Such a strange year. The year that Americans adopt the, what the Asians have <laughs> been doing for years. And face masks everywhere. Oh, they're going to start accessorizing them soon. They're going to start learning about Oh, you, you, I'm already seeing. Yeah. I'm already seeing yes. ads for sports, sports themed oh, yeah. uh, face masks. Oh yeah! As soon as you get a, a new, a new accessory, they're going to slap a logo on but it they and try and sell it. They haven't. They haven't started banning uh, any particular masks with us yet, as employees. Yeah. Although they all, they're only saying it can't have anything offensive okay. or distasteful on it. So, so far, if I wanted to wear my Boston Bruins face mask, if I had one, uh, maybe I'll make you one. That, that it would be okay to be able to wear that. So what's so, yeah. new in the world? New in the world, Kim Jong Un is no oh. longer dead. Yeah. He made an appearance. That man just keeps reappearing, doesn't he? He made a public appearance. Can we put away from that, the A public appearance that supposedly is uh, real. Is real and not taped months ago. Hmm. Supposedly. <laughs> All the news outlets in the U.S. are convinced of it. So. Yeah. Although I'm not sure what Fox News is saying about it. Oh, who cares what they think? <laughs> They're probably claiming it's fake, but because they claim everything's fake. Fake news. A bunch of states are reopening. Yeah. It's a little scary. Probably come the next week or two, they'll be shutting down harder than ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not used to hearing water down there. Oh, Must be a lot of runoff still. Yeah, it's been raining a lot. We have been getting a lot of rain. I think our store is about to start opening up later. Oh yeah, we are changing our hours. 
here. I forgot about that. We give it a few more we're, hours. We're going. Customers. We're going back to the regular hours. Oh, that sucks. I think they said, well, not totally regular. Our yep. normal hours are. I think it's either five or six a.m. No, oh, okay. To midnight. I think it's six to midnight, but we're going back to six to eleven. So. Well, ours. I think I saw on my schedule that. I for my closing shifts I'm scheduled out at like 9 p.m. now, whereas now I'm at like 8:30. So I think the store closes at nine. Yeah. Within the next couple of weeks. And that's not going to start until they after Mother's Day. They haven't announced anything no. yet. No, but the schedule is written that way, so I assume it's happening. Well, the thing with us, I think what they're finding with us is, I don't know if it's because our store has been closing at eight o'clock or it's just customers don't want to be i mean no one's working so yeah we don't have that after work crowd like we used to people are coming in at three All in the, the afternoon time. yeah they're, they're we're like getting our busy rush floor. starting at three instead of starting at five yeah so we're we're getting quieter earlier in the evening so i think they figure we really? might as well leave it open for the stragglers that want to come in later i think the problem with us is that we are consistently having a ton of customers in at like 750 there's still <laughs> like people a trying bunch to rush of in people still ch like shopping yeah. and they don't well, days really are getting care. longer too so you, you can't have the store closing before it gets dark no, but you know we start announcements 45 to 30 minutes yeah before store is closing and people just continue on shopping like mm -hmm. yep they don't like care it's normal yeah Oh yeah, how's your band going? It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's still at what is it? Twenty-four percent. And I still haven't charged it since the day I opened it. What was that like a week ago? Over a week ago. I, I just edited that video last night, the twenty first. Yeah. And it, today is the second. So that's eleven days ago. Wow. Got a neat little battery on that. And I'm still at 24%. It's getting a warning though. The battery indicator changed from uh, blue to yellow. Oh. It did that when it got to 25%. Time to plug it in. So, yeah, it's getting close. So, yeah, we're over a million now in the US. I don't know if we were Number at that one. point. <laughs> if we were at that point last time or not. I don't think we were. I think it was approaching there, but I don't think it was quite there. I don't know. Check the tapes. <laughs> Check the tapes. Yeah. Well, we do put the we do put the infected count at the beginning of each one of our videos. So. But I also feel like that would be something that we would have mentioned. Huh? I feel like we would have mentioned it if, if yeah. at that point. Seems like a pretty big milestone. We're at like a million one now, so. Yeah. Oh, our state so we're just, already 10% of the way to 2 million. Our state just put out a, a neat little map that allows you to break down the cases by a zip code. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Rather than just county. Just county, yeah. Each county can have like 10 different zip so codes. So it's almost like a sex offender registry for yeah. COVID. Yeah, you can really Although narrow it you down. Can't, you can't narrow it down to the individual person. No. Like you can on the sex offender registry. No, but we know there's 22 people in like a 10 mile radius of our zip code that have it. Is that what the number is? I don't know. It's, tw it's 22 people for our specific for zip code. For our zip code? Yeah. Which is really only half of this town. Yeah. Because I think there's two zip codes in this town. Yeah. And the other zip code has a lot more, I think. I think that zip code is closer to Durham. And Durham has a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that that big outbreak in that nursing home that they said was in Orange County is actually over. It's over near, you know, where the Best Buy in Durham is. Yeah. And the Walmart in it's Durham that way. is right at the county line, but it's on the Orange County side. Uh. So it didn't get counted as Durham. So it doesn't get counted as Durham. It gets counted as Orange County. Bringing us and down. It, and it was like 
I think it's up to almost a hundred people in that one uh, nursing home. Nursing home. Yeah. That have Makes it sense. combined between patients and staff. Yeah. So all that is getting counted as part of Orange County, and that's in the other zip code. Yeah. That's not this our zip code, so that's why that alone probably makes makes the difference between the two zip codes. Yeah. In cases. Yeah, because I think the other zip code had a couple of deaths too. Which would were tied to that. Yeah. Nursing home. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any deaths in this zip code, but we do have cases. <laughs> yeah. And again, I don't think there are very many communities out there that don't. A couple have dozen cases. cases, and there's what? Twenty thousand people. Yeah. In this town. That's that's a total guess, but. So, I can't think of anything else. Rather yeah. boring. Yeah. Have so, if you want to bring up a topic. Here's a topic. Oh. Let's think of, I, I don't want to put a number on it, but a few things that, a uh, few tips for people who are still grocery shopping that are afraid of catching the virus at the grocery store. A few tips. A few tips. For those people. Wash your groceries. <laughs> like, the, just. Okay. Sort of realize the people let's, are... Let's start at the beginning in the parking lot and work okay. your way in, okay? Parking lot. So you, you pull into the parking lot, okay? First of all, you probably... Um, I so want to say... take the long way so we yeah. can... Yeah. I want to say you should wear a mask. But I'm guilty of not wearing a mask when I go out. Yeah. So, okay. I'll give you two options on this one. Either wear a mask... If the store is busy, I would definitely suggest wear a mask. Yeah. Or be absolutely certain you can stay at least six to ten feet away yeah. from all human beings at all times. Yeah. If you're not going to wear a mask. Yeah. As grocery store workers, we have to assume that you are COVID positive. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole reason uh, why we stress to either wear a mask or don't even attempt to come, if you're not wearing a mask, to come within 10 feet of any other human being, yeah. especially the grocery store workers. Yeah. So, that's tip number one. And if, if you do need to, like, come in closer to somebody, just to sort of get their attention and be like, hey, can I get this product real quick? Don't want to come near you. Yeah. But I, I need this squash or whatever. But you can make that a lot easier by wearing a mask. Yeah. Because the whole point of the mask is to keep you, the COVID positive patient, that you don't even know if you are or not, yeah. let's be honest, from infecting everybody else. Yeah. You're not protecting yourself with the mask. No. But a lot of people do believe that they are. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mask that it's warmer everybody's... warmer up here. Yeah. Warm spot. Yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah, the cloth masks that people are wearing and yeah, making unless you're wearing the more unless you're wearing the than, what is it m95 or yeah n95 or whatever they call it yeah. that one that the nurses that are in huge short supply yeah okay tip number two you walk up and you get your you go to get your grocery cart don't assume that the people outside that are wiping down the grocery cart uh, are ac are actually making it fully clean for you. Yeah. Um, well, also that, and sometimes they can miss a cart or two because people will bring their carts back. Yeah. And they might not necessarily well, see if it goes back in the corral. I can't speak for every store, but I can tell you for our store, they're using the sanitizer that we use to sanitize our dishes. That sanitizer requires direct contact with the dishes for a minimum of one minute before it is considered sanitized. Oh, ours is five. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're using our alpha um, yeah. sanitizer. Well, you're using a weaker one because you have an anti-chemical policy. Yeah. So, oh, another house for sale. They probably want a quarter of a million for it. So, yeah. So, and what they're doing at our store is they're, they're using that sanitizer that's designed for dishes 
spraying it on the cart and immediately wiping it off. That is not sanitizing the yeah. cart. Um, some of the associates are using the sanitizer wipes, although they're not uh, supposed to because those wipes are a lot more expensive and they are, uh, you know, in limited supply. Yeah. So, so with that, just probably like so wear disposable gloves with you and just make sure not to. We'll, we'll get to the gloves in a minute. Touch your face and all. We'll get to the gloves in a minute. Okay. I got something to say about the gloves. All right. All right. So if you want to sanitize your cart, either bring your own sanitizer wipes. You don't even need to bring sanitizer wipes. They just, provide them at the store. They provide them at the store, or they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, and if they don't. Just keeping a small bottle of uh, isopropyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, at least ninety-eight percent. Seventy percent. Uh, the cheap stuff. That's all you need. And it has to be higher than, I think. Ninety percent is better. Yes. If you can get ninety, um, but seventy percent will work. Okay. Um, just, just don't dilute that because then it yeah. becomes an infected. Don't dilute it. Yeah any more than that yeah um, you can dilute 98 percent up to a third and yeah it will still be um you know but still kill things but the alcohol will help uh, bring your own wipe or whatever paper towel and wipe it yourself with your alcohol or if you can get the store's wipes use that yeah uh to wipe your cart down just sort of take control right. of your own destiny and let's talk sanitizing gloves. things yourself if you feel the need to use gloves just keep in mind, it's not a replacement for hand washing. No. By putting gloves on and you touch the cart, let's assume that the cart that you touch has the virus on it. Yeah. You use that glove to touch your produce Which and all your groceries. Which people have also touched because yep. people are very handsy with produce. Yep. Uh, and Or you use that glove and you got an itch on your face and you and you touch your face yeah with that glove on you're still going to get the virus Th that glove is not going to prevent the virus no. from getting on your hands it can still get on that glove and that glove you know the virus can still get to where it needs to get to 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 infect you so the gloves as far as i'm concerned if you can just avoid touching your face um you don't even need gloves yeah just wash your hands uh, as soon as you get home or better yet you what I be do doing that anyway what I do when I walk when I walk out of the store for the night at the end of my shift I grab a few of those sanitizer wipes on the way out the door I grab like four or five and hold them in my hand until I get all the way out to my car once I'm in my car in the driver's seat ready to go before I even start the engine I'm wiping my hands real good with the sanitizer wipes and I'm wiping down my steering wheel, my shifter, the start stop button, every basically surface that I touch yeah. in the car to keep my car uh, free. Well, we don't have sanitizer wipes anymore. We, we've been given um, some spray bottles that have hand sanitizer in it that yeah. a local brewery has made. Yep. So we've run out of like our 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 towel wipes yeah all right so as you go around the store you're putting stuff in your gro grocery cart yeah. and you're going up to the deli to get some sliced meat well before even that if there are stickers on the floor that tell you to go one way follow the directions of oh the yeah stickers. every most stores at least in, in north carolina yeah. stores are supposed to have one-way stickers actually we're supposed to have ours we did have them um, but they're doing construction on our store oh. and they just recently ripped up all the tile in the store so now the stickers so are gone, gone. <laughs> so and we've got dirty concrete floors right now in our well, store so our, our store we have stickers and signage along the aisles yeah. that are visible at eye level so if you see stickers telling you to go any specific way yeah the stores are supposed to be all i think all it's a warm them. front coming in that's why yeah. it's, it's actually the temperature is going up right now it's starting to get comfortable again yeah anyway. the temperature is actually rising Continue on with your your deli i think that's all i have to say about stickers so yeah <laughs> so obey the stickers in the aisles uh 
in in the deli or in any of the service departments when you're dealing with an employee face to face give them space yeah six feet please six feet minimum ten feet preferred yeah uh, and speak up yeah um, in in our case in our deli there is a lot of equipment in the background and everybody's wearing masks the employees and a lot of the customers and we can't hear um, we can't hear we're having a hard time communicating with everybody because all the noise you got the music playing and all that stuff and we can't hear what's going on yeah uh, and we need our customers to raise their voices and some are little. some are getting a little bit pissed off at us because they think we're not paying attention to them when in fact we just simply can't hear them because their muffled. voice is muffled through the, through the mask yeah, yeah. So give them space and speak up when you're at the service counters of either meat department or, or um, the deli. And with that, like when they're handing you a product or helping you or something, what should you see? I don't know. Come on. Try, try your very best not to like actually touch people. I've been accidentally touched by a lot of customers. Yeah. <laughs> well, when and if, I've been handing them things. And with that in mind, if you're if you're walking up and down the aisles, and you see a, 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 an employee stocking the shelves or something, they're trying to give you space. But please try to give them as much space yeah. as possible. I've had customers come right up to me, like literally, I'd be doing working on stocking something. And they're coming up right behind me and um, and reaching over you and <laughs> all of that, yeah. Reaching over me or um, just getting too much into personal space. Yeah, just getting a little too close for my comfort. Particularly people without a mask on. Again, yeah. going back to wearing the mask. I feel more comfortable when someone's wearing a mask yeah. close to me than people that don't that's so strange like a couple of months ago there was like not a culture of mask wearing so like when you see someone with a mask out in public you thought oh, that they, they're you sick assume that they're sick yeah that <laughs> and, mindset's changed hasn't yeah. it it's amazing uh, how quick I feel that's changed. a lot more comfortable with people wearing masks yep in fact i prefer it yep it's getting to that point I wonder how it's going to be, like, after all so, of this, if it's still going to be a cultural thing to wear a mask. Yeah. It'll be strange. Anyway, another tip. All right, so you're going around the store. Um, stay away from other people. Yeah. Okay. You get Now you get to the cash register. Don't pay in cash. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> don't. If you can avoid it, don't pay in cash. Yeah. Cash is dirty. Yeah. The associates have to touch it. We've actually stopped taking cash at like half of our registers. Some registers still do take cash, but really, for for half of our registers, it's uh, card and EBT only. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We prefer no cash, and yeah. with that in mind, any any tender that has to be passed from hand to hand, so cash or check. Yeah. Uh, cards can be done. You have the keypad. Yeah customer can do all the all the touching so um and so yeah the registers do periodically wipe down those keypads it's not after yeah. every single customer but no it's, it, no they, they but wipe it down multiple remember times. remember that you may have had 10 customers touch that keypad before you yeah. without it being cleaned they don't clean it after every customer yeah so um one more reason when you get home wash your hands yeah. but we'll get to get what to do when you get in home um, so yeah, don't pay cash, don't pay check, use a card, any, anything that keeps any kind of contact away from the customer and the associate. Yeah. Um, if there are shields up, try your best to stay behind the shield. Yeah, try your best to stay behind the shield. Don't dip around, don't dip around or lean yeah. across the counter trying to look at their, their screen. Talking to them, trying to lean over and talk yeah. to them. That's not the point of the shields. Yeah. You, the whole point of social distancing is we need to 
we need to keep things moving we need to you know we've 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 got the rest of our lives to socialize let's get the transaction done and get going um now when you go out to your car uh, don't ask for an associate to help you out to the car unless you absolutely need it because that, that's pulling away resources which we're already thin on it's not it's not so much that it's you're inviting the associate to get close to you yeah. again and we're trying to avoid close contact so as far as i'm concerned to be you know well, well, to be blunt about it suck it up buttercup <laughs> bring your own groceries out and handle it yourself well the thing with our store our our front end is pretty short staffed right now because they're having to divert a lot of our our uh, customer service people over to our delivery system so if you're taking away if, if you're asking someone to help you out to your car you're just taking away a team member that could otherwise be cleaning or sanitizing yeah and usually it's somebody the it's not the cashiers that go out and help you with the the delivery it's the the administration people whose job it is to walk around and just clean everything yeah because they're usually the only available hand yeah so yeah take your groceries out um, be self-sufficient yeah don't be needy <laughs> if there are shortages at now, your particular store just try and be patient be patient it's right it's a problem with everybody Every, the associates know it's a problem and there's nothing that they can do about it every store she problem. just saw a kitty every every store is She's dealing with different issues us in particular we're having to deal with um, like you said we have a a home shopping or an online shopping program we used to do 60 orders a day yeah and inside of a month we've ramped that up to uh, 200 orders a day yeah oh yeah so we've had to do some massive hiring uh, to try to fill that void but we've gotten a lot of we're diverting a lot of other existing talent that's that's yeah. having to go do that as well at this point we can only allow like 20 customers in the store at one time because we have like so many extra people in our delivery system yeah. that's just filling up the store yeah like the store will feel full but it's mostly like de delivery shops. shoppers yeah. um so you get your groceries out to your car or get your groceries home yeah um, I would have a, a can of sanitizer wipes in your car. So after you get your groceries loaded and you put your cart corral away, don't throw your gloves and you use wipes in the parking lot. We're seeing no. a lot of that oh, happening. Yeah. Um, but that goes without saying. Yep. That's just gross. But once you get in your car, wipe your hands thoroughly with sanitizer wipes uh, because that keypad that you were just touching... 10 other people touched it. Yeah. Uh, that's unavoidable because, you know, we still have transactions that yeah. have to take place. Um, well, you can you can go touch this if you have like Samsung Pay or Apple Pay. You could do that through your phone. There, there are ways you can go completely touchless, but if you have to use a card, then. Yeah, which most people do yeah. this right now. Um, yeah. So just keep in mind that any anything you've touched whether you've got gloves on or not assume somebody else has touched it <laughs> assume somebody po positive to, has touched it and you've got to make sure you clean up from that so oh off um, of that point when you're shopping probably only pick up things that you know you want to buy don't just sort of sit around perusing things and touching things yeah like, go in with a purpose be very intentional on the things that you touch because you could be spreading it to right. different people who will later put buy that item when you put it back yeah that's a good point yeah i, um, I see that a lot <laughs> so when you get home and I'm, I'm very conscious of like the things i'm picking yep. up i don't like to pick up a lot of things now. i've seen a lot of crazy stories of people when they get home or when they get their deliveries they're leaving it out on their front porch to soak under the sun for 24 hours mm. before they bring it inside. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't do that with refrigerated, refrigerated. With refrigerated product. Um, 
But the problem with that is if you live in a neighborhood like ours, if you leave any food outside your house overnight, um, it's, it's gonna, gonna it's gonna be torn into by the morning. Yeah. Um, so that's really not realistic for us, no. uh, or for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and I, quite frankly, I don't think it's necessary. All you really have to do if you're concerned with um, the virus being on the things that you bought is um, wipe everything yeah. down. Before you open it, wipe everything down with a sanitizer yeah. wipe. As much as you can. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't yeah. be spraying your produce with sanitizer. Cause it's no. It's just not, not no. something. No, but for can... open produce like that, wash it thoroughly. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Just water and maybe a vegetable wash. You can buy vegetable washes yeah. um, at the store. And that's meant to wash vegetables. Yeah. And wash like the vegetable wax off of things. Right. But yeah, just wash everything thoroughly, especially produce and sanitize as much as the dried goods that yep. you seem deemed reasonable. Yep, and try and just overall just try to limit any physical contact with anybody you run into in the store yeah. and you'll be fine. Yeah. There's no need to do I personally don't think there's any need to do home shop even as long as you're be careful you you know you're careful when you're out stay 10 feet away from everybody. Um, limit any physical contact with any surfaces or people yeah. that you run into. Uh, you you can't catch the virus out of thin air unless you're having close contact with yeah. someone. That's why we have this six foot rule that everybody keeps talking about. As long as you stay at least six feet away from people, any mist or whatever they call it, droplets that come out yeah. of, of other people are dispersed by the time they get six feet away to a point where it's pretty much harmless. At least that's what the experts are saying. And I would say try to limit the amount of shopping that you do like the frequency i still have people that are coming in every single day well, yeah you're asking like, for trouble if you're going into yeah, the store every day try try to do your shopping more in bulk than you're used to yeah i mean not you don't need to like be like doomsday prepper and buy a whole <laughs> horde of it every time you go out and go months on end kind of like what people did but with like, toilet paper but yeah like yeah once every week week and a half two weeks the yeah just yeah the just general general rule of thumb shopping. is is try to buy two weeks worth of groceries and go once every two weeks yeah that way it limits because some of these stores are limiting how many people can go in the store at all yeah. and the more often you go the more likely that you're gonna contribute to having lines, lines. outside the door for people waiting to get in because there's too many people yeah. in the store so every day around like noon or one o'clock we have to run an announcement to tell people just basically hurry up <laughs> yeah. it's a very waiting. nice way to say hurry up there's there's a huge line outside yeah <laughs> something along the lines of like, be conscious of the amount of time that you're spending in the store <laughs> yeah 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 just, they, and 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 we have recordings that say something similar to that oh no it's We're, it's a front-end person that has to go on uh, to our PA no ours is a, ours say, is a recording that comes on every two or three songs well we have that too but it's more of keeping it that, Gotta get the trash can. Recording. So do you have any other tips that you want to offer people that are other than, you know, tips to help us? How about tips that help them? Tips that help them. Yeah. Here here's the thing. Let's 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 uh address out of stocks. Oh yeah. I know you're getting them. We're getting them. Yeah. All of the store. It's getting better. It is. We started having toilet paper again. I yeah. think last We're week still having was a the first that. time we've had toilet paper past, I think, 11 o'clock. But it was yeah. still gone by the end of the day. <laughs> For us, it's still extremely sporadic when yeah. we get toilet paper. Oh, yeah. It's always sporadic. Like, we'll, we'll get an entire tractor trailer full of toilet paper. And then it'll be gone. And then we won't have any for, like, five days. Um... Oh, we did start getting a uh, hand sanitizer that comes in like vodka bottles. <laughs> yeah. I had to do a double take for for a hot second because I thought we were selling liquor. Some of the dis <laughs> some of the distiller <laughs> yeah some of the distilleries have converted yeah. to making sanitizer. Yeah. But, 
It's a it's a pretty big jug of hand sanitizer for fifteen dollars. It's coming in like a vodka bottle. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, we're anyway, out of stocks. Out of stocks. Um, we're having sporadic issues with out of stocks. Yeah. Like I had a woman today that was kind of upset. She wanted. Um, we carry boar's head in our store, and uh, she wanted corned beef oh. and we didn't have any and she was kind of upset by that it's kind of a seasonal item too. and she mm. said well we carry it year round no. but she said to the associate she said sure can you go look so the, the associate knew that we didn't have any yeah but she was so upset that we didn't have it she made him go in the cooler and look physically go in the cooler and look to see if we had it he went in the cooler. Of course, he didn't have it. Yeah. He came back out. He sits there for a couple of minutes, checks he, his phone. No, nope, don't got it. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much that's what happened. Yeah. He comes back out and uh, we don't have it. She still didn't like the answer. Can I speak to your manager? <laughs> okay, Karen. <laughs> yeah, and I think her name is Karen. Oh, God. I think her name actually is Karen. Yeah. So I get called over there and she's like, okay. She's like, he says you're out of corned beef. Can you go look and see if we've got corned beef? I said, I can tell you we've been out of corned beef for well over a week. And yeah. I said, here's why. I said, I talked to the boar's head distributor about a week ago. The guy who's in charge of getting the boar's head stuff yeah. to all of the stores in our area. And he told us directly he's being rationed on certain items. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he's being rationed on, basically meaning there's a maximum amount that he's allowed to order. And it basically breaks down to yeah. about one piece per store per week. Yeah, it's, it's the same with us for, for certain items. Right. That we're, we're only allowed to buy certain amounts. Right. And right now with Boar's Head, there's a few pork-based items. Yeah. But... The biggest problem right now is the beef. Yeah. So we're out of corned beef. We're out of pastrami. We're out of one of the two roast beefs that we carry, the London broil. We're out of that. Yeah. But we do have the regular deluxe roast beef. And we're out of beef bologna. And there's a couple other couple other hams and stuff that we're, we're having stock issues with. Yeah. So he told us that he'd only be bringing one piece per per order yeah of all of those things one or two pieces basically because he has to take what he's given from his company and spread it to yeah the 15 stores that he services so i told i explained all this to her i said she said well it just seems like a weird item to be out of i said no, no. i said it's all beef products we're having yeah. issues with and i said it's it's Boar's Head that's having the issue. I said, you're going to find this anywhere at, that sells at, Boar's at Head. any of our stores that you go to. You're going to find yeah. this shortage. It's not just this store. It's it's everywhere. So she kind of huffed and puffed and then and then moved along yeah. after that. But bottom line is out of stocks are still happening. There are, there are hiccups in the supply chain. You've seen it on the news. Uh, right now, the hot button issue is not toilet paper anymore. It's meat. Yeah. Uh, a lot of meat producers. A lot Which of, doesn't affect me. <laughs> a lot of meat. Um, a lot of meat uh, uh, processing companies are having issues uh, with not getting the product in, but yeah. it's it's getting it processed. It takes people to do that. And there, there's certain meat producers around the country. Uh, Smithfield's one of the names that comes up. Um, Tyson. Tyson. There's a couple other chicken producers, uh, some pork producers, yeah. some beef producers, basically all across the, the meat spectrum uh, are having breakouts or outbreaks in their factories. Yeah. And that's causing hiccups in the supply chain because now you've got people that work there that are sick. You've got other people that work there that don't want to go to work because they're mm -hmm. scared of getting it. Because their co-workers are sick. Kind of fr quite frankly, I don't blame them. 
Yeah. And those places are set up to... They work very close together right. and in packed quarters. And it so the example we're using is, is meat. So we're seeing... Yeah. And, and the unfortunate part of it all is there's farmers that are having to euthanize animals because they've got nowhere to send the animals. And the animals are getting outside the spec that the producer, or the the manufacturer, the processing yeah. manufacturers can handle them. Yeah. Like the chickens are getting too big, the beef is getting too big, so on, so yeah, on. Yeah, like a, a while ago there was a news story about this like giant cow in Australia that was able to survive the slaughter because it just could not be processed because it was so like huge. It was like right. a big hulking like cow. Well, right. that that's the problem that a lot of things are and the these producers are facing. Right. And these farmers They're once these beyond the right. once, standard size. Once once they get beyond that size, I mean quite frankly these these people are farming, they're producing these um these animals specifically to be harvested i guess is the politically correct term yeah. for that uh, at a certain point in their life cycle and if they get too big or you know too heavy or whatever they get outside the spec and they you come into quality issues they can't you come into quality issues they can't be used they can't be processed and the farmers can't afford to feed these animals yeah. once they get beyond that so the only thing they can do is euthanize. So, uh, unfortunately, because the the processing plants can't process the animals as fast as they're coming in, animals are having to be euthanized, which is causing, it's basically causing hiccups in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing this not just in the meat, but you're seeing this in other parts of the you know the manufacturing yeah. and food supply chain. So, the farmers are saying, look, there's enough food. For everybody there's plenty of food but it's getting the food from the farm to our houses to the, to, somewhere yeah. in the middle there's breakdowns uh, because of outbreaks in in the virus so it's causing out of stocks so unfortunately you're just gonna have to again suck suck it up buttercup except um, it find find something else to eat for the yeah. time being it's food yeah. When it comes right down to it, it's food. You're just gonna have to find something you just gotta, else. Got to be flexible and. If... And don't take it out on the yeah. grocery store employees, please. We, we get enough of that. Yeah. As it is. It, it likely isn't their fault at all. The, the, no. A lot of the ordering is above their heads. Even like the managers. Right. Heads, they're they're being told what to order and what they can order. Yeah. But. Yeah. yeah, you've got very experienced, very qualified people doing the ordering before COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It's those same people during this pandemic. We haven't forgotten how to order. <laughs> it's it's just we're ordering and the stuff isn't coming in. Yeah. Um, in our case, we're having when our warehouse starts to fall behind because we've had outbreaks of employees in our warehouses that has caused our trucks to schedule to fall behind. When we fall behind by more than a day or two, they start canceling orders, whole orders. Like we'll order a hundred cases to come on a truck and they'll just cancel the whole order and say, we can't, we just can't do that order. Yeah. Go ahead and order again for the next day. So, um, you know, we're all, we're all doing the best we can. That's, I guess, is the, the moral of the story there. So. Luckily, produce hasn't had a whole lot of out of stock issues. Um, it's a couple of random things here and there, but for the most part, people aren't too interested in yeah. buying fresh produce because they're buying in longer spans of, you know, longer buying. Yeah, times. we've seen a lot of frozen produce getting bought more yeah. so than fresh. Yeah. So people, a lot of people are buying. They're coming in less frequently into the store, and they're buying more pro yeah. more food when they come in. Yeah. So they are buying some fresh to get through the next couple of days, but they're buying more, more. frozen yeah. and canned uh, to get through a couple of weeks. And that's the way it is here, too. Yeah. So, like she said, don't take it out on the associate. They likely don't have anything to do with the out-of-stock issue. Um, yep. <laughs> it's, it's... Yep. I get it. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> Just customers complaining about 
uh, we don't have this product or that product. And not my fault. Above my pay grade. It's above anybody's pay grade at the store yeah. level. Even the store manager can't do anything oh, about yeah, no. these auto stocks. The, the best we can say is, sorry, I hope it's going to be on the next truck. <laughs> yeah. And that's usually my response. <laughs> and when's that truck coming? We don't know. Yeah. Normally we do, but we don't know. No. Uh, Ours have been coming oh, in pretty regularly. Speaking of, speaking of trucks, but... in our case, our frozen trucks were behind because we had an outbreak in our frozen warehouse. Mm. And they've since moved some people around at the warehouse and gotten frozen under control. So now our yeah. frozen trucks are coming in at least for the last week and a half. They've been coming in on schedule at the times that we expect them to show up. Because usually it's like clockwork. Within yeah. a two-hour window, every single day, you know that this truck and that truck and this, you know, this frozen truck, this refrigerated truck, and this dry truck. We call it dry trucks, but it's the unrefrigerated grocery yeah. items on the dry trucks. Um, you know, those come in like clockwork at certain times during the day. Well, the frozen for a while was a big issue, and now that's been corrected in our case. Um now our refrigerated trucks, or we call them perishables, which has all the dairy, the refrigerated meat, um, all the refrigerated deli stuff, the refrigerated, well, all the produce is, yeah. is perishable, um, all comes on one truck. And those have started to fall behind. In fact, when I left tonight, our perishable truck that was supposed to arrive, usually it arrives at four in the morning at our store. Uh, it still wasn't there at 7 p.m. tonight. Yay. And we're getting another one. We're supposed to get another one tomorrow morning. morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, we get six a week. Wow. So you just missed an entire entire day of shocking, stocking shops. Right. And, and, and when we miss a so truck hard. like that, and the one that was coming in today was a big one, yeah. um, it shows. Yeah. It really shows. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to get in a big floral order early next week for mother's day they're, they're still gonna have like a huge floral display at the yep. front of the store but we're so, supposed to be getting all that in so so when you ask an associate when is this item coming in or when is that item coming in and they give you the answer Soon? we ordered okay. it to come on the next truck and we don't know when that truck is coming they're really not lying to mm. you they really don't know when the next truck is coming we're expecting it at us. This is what I tell them. We're expecting it at tomorrow morning by 9 a.m., but honestly, we don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Just wrapping it up. Like, keep your distance from people. Sanitize to your heart's yeah. content. Whether you and wear gloves or not, wash your hands. Be nice. Be, be nice to <laughs> grocery store workers. Be nice to the workers. <laughs> Be nice to each other. Yeah. Wash your hands. Pretty much everything that they're they're telling you to do yeah. on the news. Yeah, just be be very mindful when you're going into grocery stores that while a lot of people are unfortunately jobless, but there are also a lot of people who are just at home quarantining. Um everybody everybody that works in these grocery stores don't have the opportunity to take that kind of break to get away from the public and just sort of not be coronavirus -y, Yeah. You know? we, we don't get that opportunity. So while we don't have it as bad as a lot of other essential workers, you should still be very mindful that we're also not we're, as well protected as the healthcare workers. Yeah. That, that we're still, putting ourselves in a little bit of risk to be there and to work the grocery stores to make sure that everybody in the country still has a place where they can put food on their table, yeah. whether or not they you know, have a job or not. But That is true. Yeah. So, so yeah, be nice to each other. Be nice to your fellow citizens and especially your grocery store workers and yeah. With that, it's a long one. It's a long one, so we'll go ahead and end it. Yeah. If we come up with some other stuff, we'll um, 
talk about it in the next one. I guess, yeah. So for now, I guess we'll end it and uh, we'll see you in the next one.